Oh, we've got an episode for you. This week's episode, sponsored by Mauser Electronics, comes from Santa Pod Drag Strip. And we're going to be testing this beastie to see what it can do. Let's get into it. So that's right, we're at Santa Pod, which is the UK's, uh, or in the European drag racing capital, if you like. And we're here to do a little bit of testing. It's the first time we've taken this car anything over 10 miles an hour, really. So the aim of the game today is, number one, don't break it, I think. That's right, isn't it, Tim? That's right. Number two, don't die. That's also <laughs> a good uh, uh, aim for today. But mainly it's just a case of what's going to happen with driving it over 30 miles an hour. I've got to look at things like thermal management of the battery. Um, are the drive shafts going to be able to take the torque? So we're just going to ramp it up slowly. I've got it set to about 70% power at the moment. So we're going to do our first run of the day. Some quick cars here. There's a GT3 just behind Tim there. There's a Aston Martin Formula One edition. I don't know, it looks quick anyway. Better, better get rolling. Better jump go, in, go. the queue's moving. Right. Right, a couple of changes since last time you saw the car. Uh, so, uh, according to the regulations, we've got the fire extinguisher system in now, uh, electric cutoff switch, uh, the um, uh, Marshall switches as well on the outside of the vehicle. Some of the um, stickers are now on it as well, according to regs. But apart from that, it's pretty much good to go. That sounded quick. <laughs> um, so, first run of the day. Uh, I'm going to take it a little bit easy, maybe 70% uh, on the throttle and as I say we've got it around about 70% on the power as well because I just don't want to break something straight off the bat. So we're just ease it in, I think we're aiming for low 11s, 10s today maybe, but that's the aim of the game is just hopefully not break anything. Just notice while the vehicle was sitting behind me that it's a centered roof. <laughs> How was that then? Uh, yeah, it was alright. It's, uh, it's been a while since I've been drag racing and the, the heart flutters and the, the heart palpitations certainly go because you're waiting for so long at the start and then oh, so, something goes down the track, the track has to be cleaned, you go, oh, come on, come on, my adrenaline can't take much more. But yeah, it's alright, it's just, I, I didn't put uh, any, um, I didn't do a burnout, so I didn't heat up the tyres. It's really cold today, isn't it? It's, it's about freezing. It's only just above 10 degrees. 10 degrees. Uh, so I didn't do a burnout. I just uh, uh, had traction control on as well. And I did 11.1, which yeah. is 11.1, wasn't it? Yeah, it looked, yeah. It looked quick enough. It, it felt quick. It felt I mean, solid. And, and most importantly, nothing broke. Everything was like, you know, predictable it was a straight line no dramas so that's a good base now to start things off start playing around with traction control on uh, off do some burnouts get some temperature into the tires I don't think we're going to be anything other than into tens today just because the conditions and the temperatures uh, I mean the battery is at like 10 degrees as well so that's a bit cold but yeah for a first run all right good to get the nerves and the cobwebs uh, off me <laughs> Race cars to me are about three things, power, handling and weight, or lack of weight. Now, analog devices, which is available via our sponsor, Mauser Electronics, has an awesome technology they developed, which is wireless battery management systems. So, back to the lab to have a chat about that. 
Now, it's fair to say I get a little bit too excited and geeked out by new technology. An analog device's wireless BMS system is no exception. But what is the exception here is Tim also got a little bit excited about this one because it involved Lotus cars. Because analog device's wireless BMS system has been adopted by Lotus in their latest EV platforms in their supercars. So let me explain why I got so excited. So this is a battery pack here, small battery pack, lots of battery modules, and then each each battery module there's lots of cells and you've got to keep an eye on all of these cells here to make sure the cell voltages are within tolerance and the temperatures are all good and to do that you use a battery management system these modules on the side here are those battery management systems or BMS's and they are wired hardwired to all the little cells around this battery pack a lot of complexity and wiring going on all around the front here and on the back here that you can't see in fact I've got a wiring loom here to show you how complicated this system is. So let me talk about the advantages I see in this wireless BMS system. So big advantage to me is pretty obvious. You're getting rid of all this complexity and this complexity is, is resource as well, don't forget. It's a lot of copper in here, but it's also time and money to make a loom like this, but also time and money to actually install it around the pack. And that goes away with a wireless BMS system from analog devices. It's a, quite similar to a Wi-Fi system at home. You're walking around with wireless devices, whereas you used to have to wire you know, your network cable all through the house and connect. That's what's happening with analog devices, wireless BMS system. But the biggest advantage for me with my racing hat on is what Tim mentioned when we started this video, which is, what did Colin Chapman say from Lotus? Simplify and add lightness. Add lightness. So we're getting rid of all of this weight and we're moving to a wireless BMS system. So anybody out there that's building electric vehicles and adopting technology and building packs like this, you should really be looking at analog devices, new wireless BMS system. And on that note of saving weight and with my race hat, let's get back to the racing. So this is third run of the day. What I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna put it in front wheel drive mode, do a burnout, get some temperature in the front tires, then put it in rear wheel drive mode, put some temperature into the rear wheels, and then put it back into all wheel drive for the run. And I think I'll do this one with traction control on again. So the next one, I think I'll do the same. So front burnout, rear burnout, and I'll try it with traction control off on the next one. Okay. Okay, so let's put it back into all wheel drive mode and uh, all wheel drive. Okay. And then traction control on. Okay, we are good to go. Okay, a bit of smoke in here, so I'm just going to go up to the staging, get it in stage. Now it's going to go yellow, then green, so go. <laughs> That felt solid. No wheel spins at the at the start. Traction control doing its thing. Not sure what the time was, but that felt I don't know high tens maybe. Woo! Adrenaline's going now. <laughs> Who needs coffee when you got drag racing? 
We are getting quicker. All right. Or are you? Yeah, oh, the the timing times. slips. Let's have a look. It's so cold out that the, the battery is still under 20 degrees at the moment. So we've got 11.1, 11 dead, 11 dead. Yeah, 60 foot so 1.72, 1.73. Yeah, so I think next time I'm gonna drop the traction control off. I can feel it so on the on the on the first C. I know, 60 foot it, uh, to eighth mile. You can you can just feel the traction control managing it. So so just tell us what that means. So you're doing 11. What does that mean? So it's 11 seconds, quarter mile. So, okay, so you're doing a quarter of a mile in 11, 11 seconds. seconds mm -hmm. and uh, 120, 122 miles by the end of the uh, strip. So yeah, I think what we'll do now, now I've got three runs under my belt and I'm feeling a little bit more confident to start playing with things. So now I know that the drive drain and the drive shafts and everything can cope with the torque, now I can start playing with things and see if it makes any difference. Who knows? I mean, bear in mind this isn't built as a drag racing car, but it's not bad. 11 second dead. I think we can definitely get into the tens with a bit of a bit more temperature for a start, <laughs> but also maybe with um, playing around with their uh, traction control settings. But yeah, I'm going to try traction control off. So watch your space. This next run might be a bit, little bit squirrely. The sign here says rev up your engine to clear your exhaust. Quite know how I'm going to do that. Right, last one of the day boys and girls. So the last one was traction control off but as I thought too much wheel spin. So now I've got traction control on but I've turned the sensitivity, oh, sensitivity of it right the way down. It's on a scale of like 1 to 10. I've turned it down to 1. So We'll see what happens, but it's been very consistent today, which is what I'd like to see. It's been literally 11 seconds dead, or with the 11.1 all day long, which is, what, as a racing car driver, that's what you want, consistency. So we'll see if we can push it into the tent on this last run, but we'll see. That's getting no easier getting in and out. How was that then? Well, I'd call that a successful day, mate. I'm still alive. Cars in one piece. Cars in one piece, exactly. Do you, do you want to see the times? Oh, go on then. Uh, yeah. All right, so bear in mind it's not about times today, it's about consistency and not breaking things. Uh, so, what did we start with? So, we started with 11.1 this morning, then went 11.0. 0, 11.0, 11.0, 11.1. That's consistency then, isn't it? That is consistent. So, I'm happy with that. So just, it would have been nicer to get into the tens, but it's not shy a of the tens, but that's pretty good on a really cold day, isn't it? And I did do a load of draggy runs as well. So we've got the draggy in there, which is a uh, GPS-based timing system. Uh, I'm just wondering what the 0-60s were. So let me have a quick look at that. So we've got 0 to 60 of, oh, 3.0, 3.0, 3.1, 3.0, and 3.0. So, so is that close if to you'd have two gone a second? bit quicker, you'd have been quarter mile in 10, 10 point, point something, and you'd have done 0 to 60 in, in two, point, two point, point something. Oh, well. Never mind. Must but try then, harder. It's not really about like uh, acceleration times. Today was about testing, making sure. Bear in mind, this is the first time we've been over 30 miles an hour in this thing. And you know, the drive shafts are fine. The battery temperature never got above 20. No. So we were hammering it quarter mile, quarter mile, quarter mile. I think we started at around about 16 and it went up to about 19, 20, and that was it. So I'm happy that the battery thermal management system is keeping on top of things. The fans didn't even come on on the motor radiators and inverter radiators. That's how cold it is today. So I think we're good. Uh, you know, the, the thermal management's worked fine. It gets the power to the ground fine. Traction control works a treat. 
Uh, didn't get time enough just to dial that traction control back. Um, I was going to try it on the lower setting, but ran out of time. But it works perfectly. I tried one run without traction control on, and yeah, I'm not going to do that again. It was a little bit squirrely. But that traction control and the torque vectoring between the rear motor and the front motor worked a treat. So the next time you see this car, we're going to get it wrapped. So, and I can't wait to show you the design of that as well. I'm really pumped about the design, but I can't say anything. Mum's a word on that. That's for a future episode. But the next time you see this moving, hopefully we'll have it on a track going around some corners. Well, you normally struggle with corners. I don't know what you mean. Don't know what you mean. Ignore, ignore him. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to take this on a track next because it's all very well doing straight line stuff, but that's not what this car is designed to do. It's designed to go around corners, brake, accelerate and do proper roundy, roundy circuit type stuff. So that's for the next episode. But on this episode, it remains me to thank Mauser Electronics for sponsoring this episode and the car itself. So go to mauser.com for all your electronic components needs. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.